At the start of the COVID pandemic in 2020, it seemed like there was an overwhelming flood of information being thrown our way, all day, every day. Same thing happened when the vaccines against COVID-19 were rolled out in 2021. But these days, with COVID-19 becoming endemic within the population, let's see if we can simplify things. Hello again, everybody. I'm Dr. Yan Yu, and I'm a family physician in Calgary, Canada. Today, I'm here to tell you about the four main things you need to know about the COVID-19 vaccinations heading into the fall of 2023. Canada's National Advisory Committee on Immunization has created a fall 2023 guideline, and here I'm going to distill it into four simple take-home points. One, how the vaccine will be rolled out. Two, guidance on the primary series and booster doses. Three, when to get the booster dose and why. And four, high-risk populations that need to be prioritized for the COVID-19 booster. In terms of how the COVID-19 booster vaccines will be rolled out in the fall of 2023, it will generally be done in a simpler and more sustainable manner. Health authorities are starting to realize that we must manage the COVID-19 vaccination program alongside other public health priorities and vaccination programs. The COVID-19 and influenza vaccine campaigns will likely be combined, and hopefully we'll only have one shot for both vaccines. COVID vaccines can now also be given any time before or after or at the same time as any other vaccine. In terms of the primary series of vaccinations and the booster dosing, the primary series is basically the baseline set of vaccinations that the general population needs to protect against COVID-19. For most people, this will be two doses of the original mRNA vaccine against COVID-19 taken optimally eight weeks apart and the primary series is strongly recommended for people five years of age or older. Starting in the fall of 2023, there will be a new booster vaccine available, and it will be formulated against the new XBB strain of the Omicron variant of COVID-19. Everyone 18 years of age and older is strongly recommended to get this booster. Adolescents aged 12 to 17 years old, if they're at risk of severe illness, is also strongly recommended to get this booster. This new booster will only target one strain of COVID-19, instead of being a bivalent vaccine that targets two strains, because immunological testing has shown that having just one strain generates a stronger immune response and better overall protection against COVID than boosters that target two strains. So when do you get the booster? The simple answer is six months. Six months after a previous infection or six months after a previous booster dose. I know that previous recommendations have been for as little as three months after the last infection or booster dose, but it turns out that the longer we wait, the stronger the immune response generated by the booster dose and the stronger the protection against COVID-19. Also, if we wait longer after a previous infection, it will be less likely that circulating antibodies against the previous infection will be around to interfere with the effects of the booster dose. But protection against infection also decreases the longer we wait after a previous infection or a previous booster. So don't wait too long after six months to get boosted. One common question that I've been getting from my patients is whether to get the booster dose even after they've been infected. And the answer is yes, because the data suggests that hybrid immunity, which is the immunity from a previous infection plus the immunity derived from a booster vaccine, may provide better protection against COVID-19 infection than either a previous infection or a previous booster dose by themselves. And finally, for the populations that should be prioritized to get their booster dose. As with the original rollout of the COVID-19 vaccinations, there are certain groups of people in our society that should be prioritized to get boosted. These people are either biologically vulnerable or socially vulnerable. Biologically vulnerable means these folks are at increased risk of severe complications of COVID-19 were they to become infected. These people would include the elderly, folks that live in long-term care, people who have chronic medical conditions like diabetes, heart disease, kidney disease, and other immunocompromising conditions, like transplant patients, or if they're taking medications that immunocompromise them, or if they're pregnant. Socially vulnerable includes two groups of people. First are people who are less able to seek medical attention should bad things happen after a COVID-19 infection. These would include indigenous people, as well as people living in the northern and remote areas of Canada. The second group are people who are essential to societal function, who, if they got sick and needed to isolate, would harm society too much. And these are, of course, our essential workers, like healthcare workers. So if you're a member of this high-risk population, both socially or biologically, please get boosted. 
So that's it for a quick rundown of the Canadian guidelines for COVID-19 vaccinations for the fall of 2023. What are some of the guidelines in your region of the world? Are they similar or different? Let me know in the comments down below. And finally, if you learned something new from this video, please like, subscribe, and share with somebody who is also curious about the fall 2023 COVID-19 vaccination recommendations.